Hello, all you beautiful people out there. If you are new, welcome. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you subscribe. For my fans and subscribers, welcome back. You know I love you. You are the backbone and lifeblood of this channel. Today, I'll be talking about polymorphisms and natural selection. Not much else to say. Let's get on with the video. So in case you don't know what a phenotype and a genotype are, a phenotype is the physical expression of a genotype. And the phenotype may or may not be your genotype. For instance, if you have brown eyes, that is your phenotype. However, your genotype may be that you have two brown eye alleles, or it could mean that you have a dominant brown eye allele with a recessive allele, say a green eye allele. The Hardy-Weinberg principle states that in the absence of evolutionary pressures like natural selection, allele and genotype frequencies will remain the same in a population. In simple terms, this means that if a recessive allele homozygous genotype is the fittest, it still won't invade the population because the allele is so rare. This demonstrates that natural selection only acts in the present with no eye to the future. This used to be the theory of evolution called orthogenesis, which has since been replaced by natural selection. While directional or purifying selection can eliminate variation, other types of selection called balancing selection, can maintain polymorphisms, the simplest of which is heterozygous advantage. In this scenario, the fittest genotype is that of the heterozygote, and all three segregate due to random mating. Hemoglobin polymorphisms are the best known examples of this. More important to this process is frequency-dependent selection, in which a genotype is more advantageous when it is rare. Phenomena including social interactions can create these effects. This is a great way to maintain several alleles in a given population. Then we have variable selection in which distinctive homozygous genotypes are advantageous at different times or in different microhabitats. Although this type of selection can maintain polymorphisms, it is in no way guaranteed. In other words, even if both homozygotes have advantages in different habitats, not all genotypes will be maintained indefinitely. Directional selection may favor larger phenotypes such that the alleles will rise in frequency, eventually becoming fixed. This, of course, means that genetic variation is eventually eliminated and the only way to reintroduce variation is by mutation. If the most favorable point for growth and reproduction is above the current average phenotype, directional selection will increase the frequencies of alleles needed to reach that point. Afterward, the characteristic is then subjected to stabilizing selection because any significant deviation from the mean is disadvantageous to the species. Although many combinations of alleles 
can be used to give the optimal intermediate phenotype. Mathematical models show that stabilizing selection will eventually eliminate variation. Studies carried out on natural populations show that the most common forms of selection affecting phenotype are stabilizing and disruptive or diversifying selection. Disruptive selection basically means that a heterozygote has less fitness than either homozygote. Genotype fitness differs for a variety of reasons, most often those of life history. Assuming everything else is equal, survival at an early age has a larger impact than survival at a later age, mostly because earlier ages can reproduce. For instance, if animals have babies from ages 3 to 10, mutations that make surviving to age 8 or 9 is not as advantageous to the species as a mutation that increases their survival to age 2 to 3 because it has less effect on population survival. Thus, any mutation that increases survival or number of babies increases fitness, but the extent of this increase is contingent on the age at which the mutation acts. At times, there may be a trade-off between different components or even the same component when it is expressed at different ages. This is due in part because of the principle of allocation, the fact that the body must use the same nutrients for different functions. For instance, if reproduction stunts growth, it might be better to delay this phase until an organism is bigger, which could guarantee longer life and greater reproductive success. If, however, the area in which the population lives is full of predators, making death at an early age almost inescapable, mutations that defer reproduction will be disadvantageous and weeded out. Sexual selection is a special type of natural selection that refers to an individual's ability to obtain and reproduce with a mate. In many species, this acts more on males than females, and if you think about it, it makes sense. Females have a limited number of eggs, whereas male sperm is usually abundant. However, in species that have a high investment in paternal care of the babies, sexual selection acts more strongly on females. Sexual selection is generally expressed in two ways, fighting between males, which gives the winner more access to females, and female preference of some males over others. The latter is based on characteristics that are actively displayed by males, like the tail feathers of a male peacock. In the case of male conflict, this selects more for bigger size, better weapons, and other traits used to exert dominance. Reproductive success must be weighed against other factors such as energy cost and susceptibility to predation. Although female choice enforces sexual selection, we are not quite sure how. The good genes hypothesis states that exaggerated male features shows more vigor, indicating superior genes, and females choose these males for fitter babies. Well, friends, we've come to the end of another video. I know that there was a lot of information packed into this video, but I hope you found it helpful.
If you did, hit that like button, press the subscribe button, and if you want to know when I come out with new content, hit the bell next to the subscribe button. All social media links are in the description. Also, please leave comments in the comment section. Not only do I love hearing from you, but it also triggers the YouTube algorithm. Keep learning and searching for truth. Here are a few videos from my library. If you have not watched them yet, go ahead and watch them and tell me what you think. Until next time, friends, stay safe and goodbye.